As we all know, gas prices extremely high and used and new car prices also have gone up. A lot of people are turning to rideshare services like Uber and Lyft uh, to try to save a little money. But what happens if you're in an accident? What happens if you're injured in an accident in one of those rideshare services like Uber or Lyft? Do you get the no-fault benefits? Uh, here to clear all of this up, Tom Sinus from Sinus Dreamless Law Firm. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Todd. Thanks for having me. Uh, absolutely. First question, right off the bat, can injured passengers in a, in a rideshare service still be covered under the no fault? Great place to start. Great question. And the short answer is yes. In order to receive no fault benefits, if you're in a car accident, the required showing is really quite low because these are no fault benefits, right? We're designed to make them accessible. So you need to show a victim of any car accident needs to show that they were involved, that they sustained an accidental bodily injury that arises out of the use or maintenance or operation of a motor vehicle. So if you're a passenger in a ride share and you're injured, heaven forbid, then you meet that test of what we would call entitlement to no fault benefits, meaning those benefits are available to you as the passenger. The more complicated question for rideshare situations is where does the passenger go to receive their no-fault benefits? And here our statute is quite confusing when it comes to passengers. The basic rule is that if the passenger has their own no-fault policy, so let's say it's it's you and you happen to be out in an Uber or Lyft and you're injured but you also happen to have your own auto policy for your own vehicle. Well, in that case, the you in this situation would turn to your own auto insurer for your no fault benefits, even though you were injured in the ride share. Now, what though, if you don't have no fault benefits, as many people, excuse me, if you don't have auto insurance, as many people may not, if, especially if they're using rideshare coverage, then where does the passenger go? Well, generally speaking, the passenger would then look to the insurance company of the rideshare service if they have no other policy of insurance. So that may be an insurance company, of course, that the passenger doesn't necessarily know when they get into the car, but that is likely where they will go if they need auto no fault benefits and don't have no fault benefits of their own. The, the very last place that passengers of rideshares should consider is receiving their no fault benefits through what's called the Michigan Assigned Claims Plan. Although I do believe that the more accurate answer for passengers without their no fault insurance coverage through their own auto policy is through the insurance company of the rideshare vehicle. Through the rideshare vehicle insurance company. Got it. Okay. What about claims against the at-fault driver. I mean, how do you go about doing that? Great question. And it's very similar how you would analyze the situation if there wasn't a ride share. So you take someone who's a passenger in a vehicle and if they're injured, it's you can almost assume that it, that crash was not the passenger's fault. So the question then becomes, well, whose fault was it? Who's liable for the, the passenger's injuries? Could be the ride share driver, could be the other vehicle could be both perhaps and so a passenger injured in that situation needs to be mindful of the fact that they may have a claim against the driver of the ride share or against the other motorist or again perhaps against both of them depending on the nature of the circumstances so that's the general answer the liability claim still flows to whoever is responsible even if that responsible person is the driver of an uber or lyft for example so much to break down. What about insurance? Uh, is there different insurance qualifications for those who use these ride share vehicles? There are different rules regarding the type of insurance coverage that ride share vehicles have to have. So you asked a moment ago about a liability claim. Mm -hmm. Well, a few years ago, we passed a statute in this state that required ride share services to have a minimum of a million dollars in liability coverage if the injury occurs during what's called a prearranged ride. Well, so if, if you have if you've called an Uber or Lyft and you're in the vehicle, then 
and you're injured in that moment, then the minimum liability insurance is likely a million dollars for the rideshare vehicle. Now that's a rule that is unique to rideshare vehicles. It doesn't necessarily extend to the insurance on the other vehicle. So that's something to be aware of. The other thing, and again, you can imagine this gets a little complicated quickly, is that passengers in rideshare vehicles might be able to claim what are called underinsured motorist benefits or perhaps even uninsured motorist benefits uh, if they're injured and the vehicle that struck them, the non-rideshare vehicle, either had no insurance or inadequate insurance. So there are special rules. They do get involved quickly. Um, and people who are involved in, in a situation where they're injured in a rideshare, I think just need to take away the general concept that there are legal claims, but there are unique rules and insurance requirements that apply to those claims. Yeah, a lot of ins and outs with this one. Uh, injuries happening or auto accidents happening with rideshare services. And thankfully, we have experts like you to turn to if, if someone needs more information on this, whether they're a driver or maybe someone who's been in an accident, how can they get a hold of you? They can reach us uh, in West Michigan at 616-301-3333. They can email us anywhere at info at sinusdramus.com or they can visit our website at www.sinusdramus.com.